everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. Annika from Green Cross Web Vet Veterinarian. Today I'll be joined by Dr. Annabelle from Hills Pet Nutrition and we will talk about our See the Change Challenge and also care of our senior pets. If you're not yet familiar, not yet familiar with See the Change, it is for those older pets who need a bit more zing in their life or those cats and dogs that need to trim down a bit. Also for cats that set off their pet parents' allergies. As part of today's live, we're also giving away $500 worth of Hill Science Diet food. And to enter, all you need to do is simply tell us in the comments why your senior pet needs senior vitality. At the end, we'll also try to answer some of your questions, so make sure to leave some in the comments for us, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Now, it's no secret that pet wellness starts with the nutrition that we feed them. And I'm so excited to be joined by Dr. Annabelle from Hills Pet Nutrition, and she'll tell us about the benefits of feeding age-appropriate nutrition, and we'll talk about senior care. Now, one moment while I'll just go and invite her. Hi, Dr. Annabelle. Welcome. Thanks for joining I'm me. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, no, I can hear oh. you just fine. Oh, perfect. I can hear you too. Hey, excellent. Hi. Just a bit of a delay. Seeing that you're all the way over, over in Melbourne. Nice to see you again. This nice is, to uh, see you as well. Oh, who's this handsome man? This is Claude. I'll just put him down. Hey, Mr. Claude. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. He's come to join the session, given that he is a senior pet. So he thought he'd get the Excellent. He'd come How appropriate. How appropriate. My um my senior old girl is a bit bigger. I have a I have a very large bearer hound, so um she would probably not not be as well behaved uh, <laughs> for today's chat. So anyway, so um a lot of people think that pet a pet's age where one year is equivalent to seven human years, but in fact it's not quite as simple as that. It's a bit more complicated. Yeah, it's so usually isn't yeah. more complicated. Yeah, so usually by the end of their first year, they're equivalent to a human teenager. And then by the end of their second year, um, they're about a 24-year-old human. And after that, every dog or cat year is about the same as four or five human years. So when you take that into consideration, our sort of small and medium breeds of dogs and cats are considered um, seniors when they're seven. And then our large and giant breeds are seniors a bit earlier, so about five or six years of age. Now, a question that we often get asked is, how can you tell that your pet is a senior? What are, what are the signs that pet owners should be looking for? That's a really good question. So one of the obvious ones is, how do they look? What's their appearance like? Have you noticed a few more gray hairs? Just like we get gray hairs as we get older. Um, sometimes pets can also grow gray as well. And yeah, just what's their general appearance like? You know, have they lost the shine of their coat? Um, how are they acting? Uh, are they still wanting to be playful? Are they have, do they still have get up and go? And how do they feel? Are they still interested in playing? So those are key things yep. to look for. Uh, but um, sometimes people don't realise that, you know, if their pet, they come home in the morning, oh, sorry, they come home at night and their pet doesn't greet them when they get home, it may be that their pet just can't hear. So sometimes they can lose their hearing or their vision uh, with age as well. Yep. But... Even if a pet isn't showing signs of aging, which sometimes they don't, um, inside every organ in the body is aging. So there may be changes, certain changes to the immune system or the digestive system or even behaviours. So that's, yep. that's something, I guess, to look for as well. Yeah. And we certainly so move. now that we know now that we know how to tell when our pets are senior, so either by their appearance, their behaviour, or simply looking at their age, Another really common question is how do we best look after them now that they're in their senior years? Yeah, and that's a really that, that's a really important thing to cover off because the most important thing I feel is to actually keep them up to date with all their preventative health measures. Regardless of how old your pet is, they should always be up to date with preventative health. So that's in thing, that's including things like their annual vaccination, uh, it's intestinal worming, flea control, and then depending on where you live, Things like tick prevention or heartworm prevention. Um, do you have ticks up? Yep, certainly. Oh. Queensland. Yeah, very important. Yeah, I, I used to work up in Queensland and, yeah, ticks are, 
peaks are horrible. Uh, fortunately, in Melbourne, where I live, we don't have that problem. But if, if you are wondering if that is a problem in your region, just having a chat to your local vet clinic, they'll be able to tell you about that. Yeah, Another absolutely. Thing, yeah, exactly. Really important. Another thing that uh, I think is really important is dental health because so many pets have dental disease. It's really common. And just like we go to the dentist, um, our pets often will go to the vet and have a, a checkup or a scale and polish of their teeth. But they need to be, owners need to be doing something every day to maintain that pet's oral health as well. Just like when we come home from the dentist, we have a daily routine for our teeth. We need to have something for our pets as well. So there are a variety of options for that, whether that be chews or diets. We've got our Science Diet Oral Care and also things that you can put in the water. So there's heaps of options. So looking after the teeth or brushing them, ideally, just not yep. using human toothpaste. Yeah, that's um, it. Oh, they've got so many wonderful flavours like beef and chicken and cheese, I think. Oh, cheese. My cat would love the cheese flavour. <laughs> She's terrible. She's not careful. Um, yeah, they've got all sorts of things and finger brushes. Um, so you can do – there's many ways to look after your pet's teeth. Just have a chat to your healthcare team um, and they'll be able to give you advice. Regular checkups. And so how, how, often, um, how often should a senior pet go and visit the vet? Well, I think the general consensus amongst vets is really every six months, unless, of course, you have a concern or you notice something with your pet, then, of course, you should take them in sooner. But generally every six months, because if you think about it, it's really like us going to the GP every two years. It's, it's yeah, the equivalent of that. So, yeah. yeah, six months is actually quite a long time for a dog. It is cat. a long time. Yeah. Um, so can you tell me a bit about, you know, how – Senior diet is different to just adult pet food. So why is it important to feed an age-appropriate food to our pets? So older animals often have decreased nutrient digestion and utilisation. So it's important that we feed them really highly digestible ingredients for a healthy digestive system. Um, older pets can also be prone to, um, I guess, weight gain because <laughs> they're not necessarily doing much activity anymore and they're not maybe burning as many calories so we need to have high quality protein in the food to help support lean muscles and help to maintain a healthy body condition is very important another thing senior diets have is that they um, will have um, we're looking for sort of antioxidants to help um, support the immune system and senior diets have balanced minerals and that's really important minerals are things like your sodium um, your potassium, those sorts of things, and and phosphorus. And balanced minerals are vital to support kidney and um, also heart health because excess of these minerals can actually lead to, lead to worsening of an underlying disease mm -hmm. process. And sometimes yeah. we don't know. It can be obviously hard to see on the outside. Exactly. Oh, it's exactly right, Annika. You may not know. So it's best to just switch them to a senior food once they become a senior pet. And so when would you recommend that pet parents make the switch to a senior food? So I say to people, look, regardless of whether you've noticed any signs of ageing or not, when your pet turns seven, it, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Because seven doesn't sound very old. But when your pet turns seven years of age, I really advise switching them over to a senior food because it's going to have all of the things that that senior pet needs um, to, be, to be healthy. So that is seven years for cats, small and medium breed dogs. And for larger breed dogs, it's five or six years of age, usually six years of age. But if they're a giant breed like a Great Dane, I, I say five years. So what, what I mean that, by large breed dogs. quickly. Oh, it certainly does. For, for, you know, five years doesn't sound very old, does it at all? But for a giant breed dog, that is actually, that is actually a mature dog, like a, a senior dog. Um, so doing it a bit earlier. But large breed, I mean 25 kilos or above. And so can you tell me a little bit more about Hill Science Diet Senior Vitality in particular? So the Senior Vitality food, which I, which I have over here, is a, is a balanced senior food for adults, dogs and cats, age 7 plus and 11 plus. And it's our most advanced nutrition technology for senior pets. So it is made with a proprietary blend of um, high-quality ingredients that can support brain function, interaction with family members and other pets in the household, energy and vitality. And it's really easy for them to digest, so it's 
got highly digestible ingredients in it. It's also got our antioxidant blend, which is vitamin C and vitamin E to help support a healthy immune system. So it looks like this. We have one for cats and we also have one. Uh, we actually have two for dogs. We've got a, one for smaller breed dogs and, and larger breeds that has a larger kibble. Excellent. All right. And I know that there are lots of other options for senior dogs and cats in the Hills Science Diet range. Can you tell me why there's so many different options? And how, how yeah. do people know to choose the right one? <laughs> That's what can be challenging, can't it? Because there's just so many products. But basically, when it comes to our pets, there's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, so in addition to the Science Diet Vitality, we do have a very large range of wellness foods it fills for dogs and cats, regardless of how big or small they are and whatever needs that they might have. So you, it, you can have the confidence that we will have something for your pet. So, for example, we have a large breed dog food um, because large breeds prefer a larger kibble size. Can you imagine if they eat the small kibble, they basically wouldn't even chew it. So they've got a larger kibble and they also have a faster range, range, uh, rate at which they age as well. Whereas with our small paws range that you may have seen on shelf, that's been designed for those small breeds that are less than 10 kilos adult body size. And these dogs, fortunately, live a really long time. And so we've got a, a special antioxidant blend in there for lifelong immune support. Now, for cats, <laughs> we also have a lot of different products. Um, such as diets for, for special needs, such as a hairball control diet. And, and this contains natural fibres to actually help to comfortably remove those hairballs through the digestive tract. And then we've also got diets based on a cat's lifestyle. So one of the diets we have is our indoor range, and this is designed for cats with an indoor lifestyle to support and meet their energy needs. Yeah, I've got one of those. So we're, we're on um, indoor and sometimes we're on hairball. We've got a little Siamese that just hangs purely indoors. So, oh, Perfect. Oh, I, love, I love Siamese. I've got two cats. I'm a big cat person, but I do also love dogs. <laughs> so what about those senior pets? Like we discussed before that they may have some underlying disease like kidney disease or heart disease, brain disease. You know, what about those pets? Is there specific diets for them? Look, there certainly are, but what you need to do is consult your veterinarian. So uh, it's really important to go to your vet, express any concerns that you might have. They will take a full history from you, do a thorough physical exam and recommend any tests such as blood tests, urine tests or even x-rays. And then they'll be able to formulate, basically they'll be able to diagnose the pet with a certain condition. Once you've got that diagnosis, then of course they may recommend nutrition as part of management, often you know, nutrition will be an essential part of the management. And within our Hills Prescription Diet range, we certainly have a huge variety of foods. We've got something like over 13 feline diets and, and 14 different canine diets. Um, so we've got diets for joint, kidney, um, liver, brain, urinary health. But it is really important that you have a diagnosis from your vet um, and, and not start any food without first seeking Absolutely. their advice. Great. And so do you have, have advice on how to make um, this transition um, the best um, when, when you're swapping your, your senior pet to, to their new food? Sometimes some pets are fussy, aren't they? I mean, generally the, the Hills food, it, it actually tastes wonderful. We have a team of pets that actually taste test the food at Hills. That's their job. I mean, what an amazing job. So they're trained to be fussy so that, the food, so that we make the food that tastes the best. Um, for them so um, most of the time there wouldn't be any issue but we generally recommend still doing a transition just because if you are changing foods sometimes your pet can get a bit of an upset stomach if they're sensitive um, and also it can just help as well in terms of getting them to accept a new flavour if they are particularly fussy so I generally recommend a transition of at least a week but sometimes increasing that depending on how fussy uh, the pet is so it, sometimes it can take two to two weeks or more sometimes four weeks with some cats. The way I recommend doing it is, um, particularly with cats, is not mixing the two, fold, two foods in the same bowl. So make sure you've got two bowls. Make sure you get the new food before you run out of the old food so that you can actually transition over properly and then just slowly start reducing um, the proportion of the old food and gradually increase the proportion of the new food. 
yeah that's a really good idea because yeah cats, cats can be really fussy whereas dogs are like well here's my bowl excellent there's food in it i will eat it uh make it my cat it easier <laughs> my cat will eat anything if i'm not careful she'll jump on the bench and she'll try and eat she'll try and eat my food so other than mini i think maybe some other Lucky. cats yeah, yeah i mean it is good but it it's also it, it's also a challenge there in itself um some cats as well what you can do is actually put the food on a flat bowl because they get whisker fatigue some of them they don't like having their whiskers up against the side of the bowl so that's another handy oh, wow. tip. yeah that, that's pretty cool yeah because because I'm, I'm sure that most people wouldn't think of that i wouldn't think of that you know but but it's so true because they they sense so much with with their face like um one of the things that we notice in the clinic is sometimes when you put that plastic ear collar on the cats, which we know all pets hate, but sometimes cats just tend to walk backwards because they can't feel their whiskers. They're super important to them. Excellent. Yeah, they right. are. So I can see that we've gotten lots and lots of questions here. So we might just see um, if we can answer some of those audience questions at the moment. Um, so here's the first question uh, for me. What are some top five tips for caring for your senior pet? So, as we've learned today, obviously nutrition is super important to make sure that they're on the right food so we can support their um, health um, externally and internally. Maintaining regular veterinary care, so going to all those checks, doing all the parasite prevention and keeping up to date with their vaccinations and, and everything. Um, I think also having a really comfortable place for them to rest because they, they do need their rest as well. So particularly our older pets, if they, they um, you know, sometimes might have arthritis, things like that. So having a comfy, comfy bed would be really important. Um, and then I think, well, I, it's probably really cold in Melbourne at the moment, but as, as the weather starts cooling down, you know, having a, like a jumper, keeping them warm, making sure that they're, they're you know, nice and comfortable. And then obviously if they've got any underlying conditions, you know, looking after those as well. I think, yeah, um, I've got a question for you, Dr. Annabelle. Oh, cool. How is, how is senior food different to normal food? Okay, so I presume by normal food, they're just, they're, this person means adult food or, or uh, an all-life food. I would say so, food. yeah. yeah. Average dog <laughs> food, yes, I would say adult food, yeah. Because you do see foods out there that say they're suitable for all life stages as well. Um, and that basically means that they need to meet the energy requirements for the most demanding life stage, which is growth, gestation, and lactation. So those diets will be higher in um, energy, and they will be higher, so they're sometimes higher in things like fat, and, and often they're higher in protein for growth requirements, and they'll also be higher in minerals, things like calcium and phosphorus. And so that's the main difference there. So with our senior foods, they will have, we don't need to be giving them excess calcium and phosphorus because they're not growing um, and some of those minerals in excess can put them at risk of um, bladder stones and it can also things like phosphorus can I mean if they've got underlying kidney disease it can worsen it so um, I guess those are some of the main differences excellent excellent all right another question for you um, is there a wet food version of the senior food yes there there are various wet versions unfortunately there's not a wet version of the senior vitality food uh, but we do have a range of different flavors and forms in our other senior foods so if you look at our mature adults 7 plus and 11 plus range there'll be a variety of, of foods there so you don't have to compromise the nutrition and you can give them a, a bit of a, a different taste all right so can you then suggest you know is it possible to mix the wet food and the dry food together yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly possible to do that because the, the nutrients are basically the same in, in both of those wet and dry, dry foods of the same. Um, so like, our, for example, our adult um, 7 plus dry and, and, the, and the wet is pretty much very similar. So, yes, that's absolutely fine to do so. And I think it's, I think it's good, good to do that because it also encourages them to have a, a little bit more water as well, particularly with cats. Yeah, that's it. If they're not yep. big drinkers. Yep, that's it, particularly when it gets cold. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and a lot of my clients, um, they they seem to do a bit of the mixed feeding where they where they do add um, a fair bit of wet food in there, or they use a chopper or something. So that's really good that we can you know have both from the from the same range if they're already used to doing that. 
Yeah, I, I personally really like it for my cat, so I use the, the perfect weight pouches for her. Um, and I just find that the extra water also helps to fill her up a little bit. And she's not a big drinker, so um, plus she absolutely loves them. So <laughs> she can attest to the great That's taste awesome. of the food. All right, so the next question is for me. Um, when is my toy poodle considered to be senior? So toy poodles are obviously a very, very small breed of dog. So we would say that from seven years onwards, they would be considered seniors. But we do know that these little guys, um, they tend to have a really long life. All, all our sort of little breeds of dogs, you know, we often see them at, you know, 17, 18, uh, sometimes even older. All right, Dr. Annabelle, another question for you from our audience. Um, what is a good product for an overweight dog? Oh, look, so we do have a couple of products, I guess, for an overweight dog. My advice would be to, to speak to your vet and just get uh, an idea of what their ideal body weight should be because when we want a pet to lose weight, we do need to feed their ideal body for their ideal body weight. Um, that's really important. The other thing is just to make sure that there's no underlying issue there that they don't have any other underlying disease that could be making them gain weight. So if, if we've ruled all of those things out, then we do have options within the science diet range, like our perfect weight or, or even in our prescription diet range. But that would be my advice because the vet healthcare team um, can, can really help to determine that ideal body weight, tell you how much to feed and tell you what the expectations are because pets, we don't want them to lose weight too rapidly because we want to maintain that muscle mass and we want to lose fat. So like a cat that needs to lose a kilo, that could take a year. Um, yeah. I think that, yeah. And, so I, and that I find that it can become really, really frustrating if, um, you know, if there is either an underlying condition or it's not happening fast enough or there's any con you know, concern. So, so it is a really, really good sort of conversation to have to make sure that, um, you know, the expectations are, are managed and, and, and um, for a successful outcome. Yeah, and they can give you a lot of tips as well in terms of, uh, of different things you can do with feeding, like hiding food or interactive feeders and, um, you know, encouragement and advice if, for troubleshooting if things aren't going according to plan. So I think, yeah, vets and nurses are, are really great people to talk to about weight loss. So next question here um, for me is um, I have a 15-year-old cat. She's pretty healthy but teeth not great and she doesn't drink water at all. Any tips? All right. So a 15 year old cat. Uh, I'm not sure when the last vet visit was, but obviously that would be a good idea just to make sure that everything's okay. Cause we do know that cats, when they get to that age, there's a few different conditions that tend to pop up. So um, just to make sure that that's um, not causing any of these issues. And obviously if there's, if there's any dental health issues, then those should probably be addressed as well. Um, drinking water, cats are really funny. So um, like Dr. Annabelle said before, uh, giving them wet food often is a good way to encourage them to get more, more water. Um, other things are they really seem to like running water. So sometimes those water fountain type things, like if you notice that your cat likes drinking from the tap or from the shower, those sorts of places, water fountains can work really well. Um, and some cats, if there's any dental sensitivity, they can actually really hate cold water so in our cold winter mornings the water might actually be too cold um, so figuring it out a way to try to um, you know warm it up a little bit for them might also help another question is for me are there any signs to look out for that indicate I should change their diet to a senior one if you, so if you're seeing any of the signs of aging that we we covered earlier so if you're seeing those gray hairs come in or they're seeming a bit sluggish a bit tired uh, not moving around as much, um, sleeping the day away, or if you just look at their age, then, then yes, those are all signs that it will be a good time um, to make the switch. Another question for you, Dr. Annabelle. How should you trans transition your senior pet onto new food? And why is it important to transition the food slowly? But, I think there's... So in terms of transitioning, I recommend... No, not running out of the previous bag of food. So making sure you've gone and got the new food first, so something like the yep. senior vitality if that's what you're going to switch to. And then what I advise doing is how much working out how much that pet needs to eat. There's a bit of a guide on the 
on the bag and then feeding um, in terms of how much to feed, then giving them 25% of their calories from the new food and 75% or roughly three quarters, it doesn't have to be exact, it's not an exact science, from the three quarters of the old food. And so doing that for a couple of days and then, you know, making it 50-50 of both foods and then slowly just increasing the proportion of the new food. There's no hard and fast rule. I generally say over about a week, uh, but you can do it way longer for, for fussier pets um, or you can do it more rapidly. Some pets, like my cat, she could eat anything and I wouldn't need to really transition her. She would be fine. But some pets are more sensitive and they'll get an upset stomach and some are also more fussy as well. So the transition just helps with both of those uh, issues. Excellent. Great tip. Fantastic. Um, another question for you, Dr. Annabelle. Um, do you have any products for overweight cats? My Siamese cat is around six kilos. He's not fat, but he's big and muscly. Do you think he's considered overweight? Oh, all right. So I guess the first thing you need to do is have a look at your cat's body condition. So what you need to be able to do is if you run your hands down along the cat, you shouldn't be able to, you should be able to feel the ribs. You shouldn't have, if you can't feel them, then that's a sign that the cat may, may be carrying a little bit of excess fat. Have a look at them from above as well. You should be able to see a nice uh, waistline, so it should look like they've got an hourglass. And then from side on, they should have an ab abdominal tuck, although some of those cats have that little bit of a fat pad down there, so that can make that a bit tricky. Primordial pouch, yes. Yes, mine has that. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's, I guess that's the first step. Um, and then, you know, if you think your cat might be slightly overweight, we do have uh, obviously the Hills Prescription, uh, sorry, the Hills Science Diet Perfect Weight Diet. Um, but if you've got any concerns um, and there's, you know, the cat is, um, you know, you think, oh, no, I can't feel the ribs at all or I can't, you know, then that's, that's the reason I would just go and get a, get a checkup by the vet just to make sure that, you know, there's not an, something else going on or, um, you know, they don't need to be on it. And another, and really, another really good thing is that every time we do visit the vet, they, they um, always weigh the pet. So you will always see, and there's always, um, if there's a trend of the weight going up or if there's a trend of the weight going down, you know, those, those can all um, give us information, you know, at, at what point do we need to intervene? Is there something to look out for? what's going on so that's really handy yeah I think that's a really good tip that one and the other thing is I think because we spend so much time I think because obesity is so uh in the pet world is just so prevalent uh we've sort of changed a little bit of what we what we view as normal so um yeah, the perception that's it yeah the perception is a little bit different so I think it's always a good idea to go in and just get a check and up uh, and you know weigh the pet and just see how how they are tracking because it is so important to maintain them at a healthy body weight. It's one of the, the most important things we can do. It's putting less strain and uh, stress and strain on their joints, um, and you know they'll feel much happier when they can move around, particularly when they're getting older. Exactly, exactly. All right, so we have another question here for me. Um, don't suppose you have any tips for getting my senior cat more active? I have a harness for him, but don't know how to get him used to it. Thank you. Um, so, well, one of the things to do, first things to do would be to address the diet. So if your senior cat is not on a senior diet yet, that would be a really good idea to do um, because then they might have more energy as the diet is more suitable for them. Um, other than that, also taking them to the vet to make sure that there's not underlying problems like arthritis, which is really quite common in older cats as well. Um, so if they're in pain, they're not going to want to be moving around. As far as harnesses go, um, I don't. I think that's a very individual cat type thing. Um, every time I've tried a harness on a cat, it's been very unsuccessful. Um, I haven't had a cat yet that really loved it, but I do know that there are some cats that do enjoy the harness. But I think it's one of those things where they have to be used to it from quite a young age, so they get used to sort of having the feeling of the harness on them because they're quite fussy otherwise, and they they sort of get a bit funny about it. Um, so I had I one. Know, do you have any other good tips about harnesses? I had a, an Abyssinian uh, kitten and he used to walk on a harness. I used to be able to take him on a lead and he was amazing. But all my other cats, it, it's been an absolute fail. But yeah, I was going to say an Abyssinian, of course. <laughs> Abyssinian, they love fetching. They're really dog-like. Uh, he was a, yeah. an adorable cat. Um, 
But my cats now, I, I do different things with them. So my one of my cats, Minnie, she has um, uh, one of those electronic sort of uh, frolic toys with the mouse that moves around. She absolutely oh, loves that. And then those toys that have feathers um, on the end of them or, or things um, and those frantic movements, uh, she absolutely loves that too. So that's how I keep right. her keep her fit. But Active. like as you said... A lot of cats can have arthritis and because um, it's really prevalent and people just don't know. Like it, you may just, they may not be grooming as much as they used to or they may be hiding more because they're in pain and, and people just yeah. don't realise. Yeah, it's not as obvious. Like in our dogs, we, we sometimes see they might be limping a little bit or having difficulty getting up and down the stairs or anything like that, but cats don't really show those sorts of signs. So it can be really, really subtle. All right, another question, Dr. Annabelle. Do I need a prescription for the senior vitality food and where can I find it? Uh, no, you don't need a prescription for that. It's a wellness diet. So it's designed for, you know, a, a well older pet. It's part of our science diet range. So you would be, be able to find that um, at, you know, all, all good retailers like, like Pet Barn. Awesome. All right. And one more question. Um, if I have a rescue dog and we don't know their age, how can I find out? So um, the veterinarians are pretty good at aging dogs by their teeth usually. So we look at any wear and tear, um, any presence of dental disease. We look at other things like their eyes, their skin coat. Um, sometimes it can be a bit hard. Like usually younger pets that are two years and younger, it can be quite easy to tell. Uh, but in, in between ages, it's sort of, you know, to and then their senior years, it can be really hard to tell exactly. And then again, senior pets, we, we can tell quite quite easily. But um, yeah, that's that sort of tricky age in between when we not, might not be entirely sure. Of course, in younger pets, you know, if if their teeth have interrupted yet or they're just at that stage, then it then it's really easy. All right, thanks everyone. We had a great time, and thank you so much, Dr. Annabelle. Oh, thank you so much now, for having me. No, that, that was wonderful. Now, um, thank you for all the questions. There was lots of really, really good questions and we've all learned so much today about caring for our senior pets and about, and about food. So be sure to tag us with the hashtag see the change so we can follow you on your own journey. Thanks again, Dr. Annabelle. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you. See you all again soon. Bye-bye.